Welcome to Get Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 8.4. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So we asked to calculate IFT for time greater than zero, given this circuit over here. So let's start. For time less than zero, we have this circuit over here. The switching action takes place at, so the switch moves from this point to that point at time equals to zero. So before that, we only had this circuit in play. And we assume that we'd actually reach steady state. And at steady state, this is a short circuit over here. And that will help us to find i just before zero, which is also the same as i just after zero, because the inductive current doesn't change abruptly. So we have a circuit like this for time less than zero. We have 10 ohms over there. And we have a short circuit here because we have reached steady state. And we have that same I indicated over there. And this is going to help us to find our I. So I is just basically, using Ohm's law, just basically 100 divided by 10. And I, which is the initial I, is equal to 10 amperes. Now let's look at the position of V over here, which is the capacitor voltage. So since at time less than zero, this isn't in play or it, it isn't connected. So you can therefore conclude that VO, V at zero, which is the same as V just after zero, G, V before zero and after zero is the same, which is zero volts. So these are the two initial conditions which we currently have from, from the inductor and the capacitor. So now we move on to time greater than zero. Now at time equals to zero, we have this switching action over here. So this is the circuit that is in play, or this is the circuit which is actually connected at time after time equals to zero. So I'm gonna, just going to redraw it here. So this is what we have. We have one Henry, then we have one over nine farads, then we have five ohms over there. So as you notice, this is a source-free RLC circuit, and we'll deal with it accordingly. So let's see, where can we go from here, and what can we do? So the first is to identify the type of response which you have, which we can determine from finding our damping factor, or number of frequency. Damping factor for a series RLC circuit is equals to, we find that using the formula which says R is divided by, 2L. So substituting the values which you have, we're going to substitute this R, which is 5, we're going to substitute 2, then we're going to put L over there. So basically have 5 divided by 2, multiply by an L of 1, so that is 2.5 nepers per second. And we're going to find our undamped frequency, or our resonant frequency, which is 1 divided by square root of LC which is going to be, so substituting L over there, we're going to have C over there, so we're going to have 1 over 9, so square root 1 over 9 should be uh, 1 over 3, so taking that, the reciprocal of that will be 3, and this is in radians per second, right? So these are the two values which you have, and these will help us to find the type of response, so alpha, which is the damping factor, is less than omega O, which tells us that we have an underdamped response. Now that we have an underdamped response, we are ready to deal with complex numbers. And so just turn your calculator into complex form and we're going to proceed to find the roots because an undamped response has the general form, which is of, which looks something like this and is associated with it is associated with complex numbers right omega dt so this is the general form of our underdamped underdamped i keep saying undamped it's underdamped response right so let's find the roots after uh, changing your calculator to complex form these are going to be the roots so it's negative alpha plus or minus square root of alpha squared omega o squared and your answer or your answers for s1 and s2 which are the roots should be negative 2.5 so both of these are actually negative 2.5 plus or minus j so this is plus or minus 
j 1.66. So this is in the form which says negative alpha plus or minus omega d, where omega d is actually equals to the square root of that. So to successfully transfer this into that formula, just take this value, which appears after the j, to substitute it into your general formula. So now we are about to con complete the formula of our RFT, which is our response. So a damping factor we find to be damping factor we found to be 2.5, and I outlined the general form of our underdamped response. So we're going to substitute into negative alpha, which is negative 2.5t. Then we have a1 cosine, where we have omega d. We're actually going to substitute the value which you have just as j, which is 1.66, right? 1.66t. Then we're going to add a2 sine 1.66t. And all of this is in amperes. But as you see, there's some values which are missing. This is time, that is time. But here, we have coefficients which are missing. And we're going to use our initial conditions to find those co coefficients. So the first initial condition is I of O, which we previously found to be 10 amperes. So I of O is equal to, so we're going to substitute I of O, which is I of 0. We're going to substitute 0 there. Then we're going to have 1. We're going to have 1 here and 0 here. So A1 is therefore equals to 10, because that is the value of i of 0, which we found. So after substituting 0 wherever we see t, this will be a1, this will be 0, and that will be 1. So 1 multiplied by a1 is equal to the value at i of 0, which is 10. So we now have one of the variables, but we are undone, because we still have we still have the other coefficient over here. So what can we do to actually find that? So here's a formula which you must know. As you go around this circuit in in this direction, let's say this direction, you're going to encounter this, which is your voltage across the inductor, plus you're going to have your 5 I-O, and this I-O is the inductor current. Then finally, you're going to have the voltage, which is across your capacitor, and all of that is going to be equated to zero. Right? So what can we do from all of this information? We can use all of this at point zero, which is going to help us to come here and differentiate this. And this is what I mean. So the voltage across an inductor is equal to L di over dt. And we have I O already defined. And we have our initial capacitor voltage defined. And we found that to be zero. So this is zero over here plus. And then our initial current is 10, which you also find over there. So 5 multiplied by 10 is 50. Then here we have initial derivative, or whatever you want to call it. And this is actually what we want to find. So we're going to take this to the other side of the equal sign and say di is 0 plus over dt is equal to negative 50 divided by L. And this is us solving for the derivative just after 0. And our L is 1, and therefore we have negative 50 amperes per second. Now that we have this negative 50, we're going to differentiate our general formula over here. So differentiating the general formula for an underdamped response, we are basically going to have negative, our damping factor is 2.5, so we're going to use the product rule, I think that's what it's called. So this is what we're basically going to have. Then I'm going to multiply that by A1 cosine omega d, so for the first part of the derivative, we don't derive the second bracket, we only derive what's on the outside using the product rule. As I said, that's what I think it's called. Then we're going to add this value without deriving it. And now we're going to differentiate whatever is inside the brackets. So in here, we're going to have omega d. Our omega d is actually 1.66. So we're going to have negative 1.66. This negative comes from the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, that 1.66t. And over here, we're going to have the, the, the similar thing, which says 1.66a2, but now it's cosine 1.66t. We now, this is the derivative, and we're going to substitute 0, so we can actually use this value here, di over dt at 0. So di over dt, wherever we see t, you're going to substitute 0. And therefore, we're going to have negative 
then we're going to have multiply by a1 this is going to become one that's going to become zero so that is all then we're going to have plus this is going to become zero that's going to become 1.66 a2 is equals to the value at zero the value of the derivative at zero if one to be negative 50 so negative 50 that is what we have over there so now we're going to multiply with we know our a1 is 10 so we're going to multiply so it's actually negative 25 then we have plus 1.66 a2 is equals to negative 50 taking this to the other side of the equal sign and dividing by 1.66 should give you uh, a value for a2 which is actually negative 15 or 0 6. now that we have both coefficients we can finally write the response in total or we can just summarize the response as i of t is equal to e to the minus 2.5 t with 10 cosine 1.66 t negative 15.06 sine 1.66 t in amperes for time greater than zero.